Hi, my name is Dan Freeman. I'm a bassist, producer, and Dubspot NYC and online instructor. Today I want to talk about adding an analog sound to a digital production. Even if you're not a master instrumentalist, you can still get a really good analog instrumental sound with a sound card, a laptop running Ableton Live, an instrument, and this technique which I'm going to show you in this video. So first I just want to quickly walk through how to get audio into Ableton Live. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to set up an audio track within Ableton. And the key command, for those of you who don't know, is just a command T. Now, once we set up the audio track, I'm going to go to Ableton's preferences. So in the preferences, you want to set up the input configuration so that you know which channels are taking an audio. In this case, it's channel 1 and 2, because the balance only has two inputs. Same with the output. I'm going to set this and you're going to see that the balance has two outputs. So next we want to go in Ableton Session View to the lower right hand corner. And we're going to click the button that says I.O. And the I.O. button is going to open up a menu above the faders. I'm going to choose which channel I'm putting the audio in. And in this case it's channel 2. And I am going to arm the track to record. And now you should see the audio coming into the session. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to lay a bass line to this beat. This is actually to a track to an upcoming record of mine. It's called Let's Watch the Sunrise. So here's the beat. Another couple of useful tips before you start recording. First of all, go back to your preferences. And in the Record Warp Launch tab, you want to activate Start Recording on Scene Launch. It's going to make your life easier because then you can hit the scene and the beat will go with the recording. Next, you want to set up a click count in. And the way you do that is you go to the upper left of Ableton's screen right next to the metronome and you click this arrow facing down and you select for the count in one bar. So now it's going to give you a one bar count in as you record. I'm going to hit the scene launch button and what I'm going to do is I'm not really going to try to nail an awesome bass line onto this groove. Instead I'm just going to kind of play a couple of notes that I'm going to want to be part of the bass line. As we're going to see uh, I'm going to let Ableton take care of putting this thing together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a scene and I'm going to record a couple of notes that I want to be part of my bass line. As you record, it doesn't even really have to be in time. You can just really kind of play notes to your instrument, you know, strum your guitar, whatever it is, as long as you get some audio to work with. I'm just going to play back what I have. And it's not exactly the most badass bass line in the world. But we're going to fix it. So now I'm going to open up another track, and this is going to be a MIDI track. I'm going to use Ableton's key command, which is Shift Command T. So next I'm going to add Ableton's drum rack instrument to the MIDI track. You can find it in the Instruments tab. And I'm going to double click, and it's going to appear. Once I have the drum rack set up, I can take this audio clip of the bass that I just recorded and I'm going to drag it into one of the slots within Drum Rack. So once the audio clip is in the Drum Rack, you can double click and you are going to see Ableton's Simpler instrument. Now, a really kind of handy little trick which I use to do this is that you can hold down the Option key and you can drag the same clip 
to some of the other cells in drum rack. And so this just saves you a little bit of time. You don't have to drag the clip in five times. You can hold down the Option key and just click and drag it into some of the other cells. Now, I'm going to double click on the first cell that I dragged in. And I'm going to now edit the clip within drum rack using the start and the end arrows in the simpler. So the important thing is that you want to kind of move the end arrow and the start arrow right around the audio you want to grab. So in this case, I've just isolated a single note here. And I'm going to call that note F, because that's what it was. I'm going to go to the next cell in the drum rack, and I'm going to find myself another note. So I can just hold down the play button and kind of listen to the, some of the notes I've played. So I'm going to take the next note here, and once again I'm going to take the start arrow right up to the beginning. And you can get a better view within the simpler by using the magnifying glass as you open it up and try to take the arrow right to the front of the note. Okay, And once again it's really important that you use the end arrow as well because otherwise when you hit the note it's going to keep on running. So you really want to put the end arrow right to the kind of last point of the note. So now this is the note I have. So this one is a G. So for the third note, I want to get the A flat. And I'm going to do the same thing, where I'm going to take the arrow right up to that note. And I'm going to listen to it, just make sure it's the right note. And once again, really important, you want to use the end arrow to kind of limit the length of the note. OK, and so I'm going to call this cell A flat. Now, I'm just going to do one more. And I'm going to kind of find some of the uh, pops I did, uh, which is pop on the basses, kind of this sound here. So I'm going to double click on the clip. And just I know I did it kind of later on. So there's a little lick right there. So I'm going to isolate that by, once again, moving the start hour right to the beginning and the end arrow. OK, and I'll call this fill. You can do this with any instrument. I've done this with guitar, for example. I've even done tracks where I have broken down kind of individual notes to these kind of crazy bass solos and sped them up so it sounds um, superhumanly uh, fast. Before we make a line, I do want to show you something else that saved me a lot of time working with drum rack. So I want to turn up the volume of all these little samples of audio. Right now the volume is set at minus 12. I'm going to set it at minus 6. Now instead of going to each little cell and setting the volume to minus 6, you can hit control click or right click and there's an option here which is copy value to siblings. So I'm going to hit that option in the menu. And now each one of the clips within the cells is going to be at minus 6. To make a line, I'm going to double click on a cell within the MIDI clip. And once I do that, to the left, you see the names of each of the cells. So now, using the pencil tool, which you can activate by just hitting B in Ableton Live 9, and also using the grid commands, which are in Ableton 9, Command 1, which makes the grid smaller, Command 2, which makes the grid larger, Command 3, triplets, Command 4, which will kill the grid,
now I've recorded a bass line and it works, it's on, it's with the drums, and it's really just made up of a couple notes that I played in. But let me show you something that I recorded recently for my upcoming album using the exact same technique with the same beat. So this is the drum rack for the bass line, and here I used a bunch of notes, including some click sounds, some slides, some fills, and sounds like that. And here's the MIDI clip, and this is what it sounds like. Totally programmed. So I'm going to show you just one last thing, which is pretty similar and is actually one of the coolest functions within Ableton Live, and that is the slice to MIDI function. So you can get Ableton to do what I just did automatically. I'm going to go back to my original bass line. And I'm going to right click on the clip. And I'm going to select Slice to New MIDI Track. So when that happens, you're going to have a menu pop up. And it's going to ask you how you want to create the slices. You can create them according to the time, or you can just pick the transient. In this case, I'm going to pick the transient. The transient is, is really kind of the spike in, in, in the wave. I'm going to hit OK. And Ableton's automatically going to give me a drum rack, which is full of the slices. Now, what's cool here in doing this is that if we look at the macros, uh, you can get some really kind of cool sound designs by offsetting the start offset, the loop lengths, and the loop compress. You can also set the ADSR envelope across all of these. So this is something I would definitely play around with, and I use this technique a lot too. So this technique works particularly well if you want to chop up a loop beat and really make it your own. For more ideas on adding live instruments to digital productions, check out a couple of the other videos I've done on DubSpot's YouTube channel. For more information on our classes in Los Angeles, New York, and online, check out DubSpot.com. This is Dan Freeman. Thanks for watching. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.